Do you get any uh, any relation to Tony? Or do you get that all the time? All the time. And you know what? That is a that is a fine reference. I'm really glad to have that that as my like namesake, <laughs> not something else, right? It could be a lot worse, right? Tony Stark is a pretty great one. David Stark from Watcher Pass. Today I'm talking to Paul Johansson, who plays John Lee in God is a Bullet, which is coming to theaters on June 23rd, 2023. I'm going to talk to him right now. And while you're watching, if you can like and subscribe to this channel, that would be fantastic. I'll spend a lot. Thank you. Do you get any uh, any relation to Tony? Or do you get that all the time? All the time. And you know what? That is a, that is a fine reference. I'm really glad to have that that as my like namesake, <laughs> not something else, right? It could be a lot worse, right? Tony Stark is a pretty great one. Before he was Tony Stark, he was on Soap Dish with me back in the 1991, I think, or something like that. We did oh, a wow. really fun movie with Sally Field together, a comedy. Oh, and awesome. he was the funniest guy to be around in my, my, my whole life. I just love him. That's awesome. Yeah, he seems he seems to have, you know, he has his ups and downs, but he seems to have kind of pulled himself together and kind of made it, you know, cleaned up his image and made himself into kind of a, a lovable character. So, Well, behind every great man is a, is, a, is a better woman, and he married Susan. So I think that really changed his life for the better. For sure. All right. Are you ready to go? I, I'm always ready to go. All right. So thanks so much for joining me today. I've got Paul Johansson, who plays John Lee in God is a Bullet, which is coming to theaters on June 23rd, 2023. It is a family-friendly, coming-of-age... Uh, that's right. No, that's, yeah. <laughs> it's just, just a lovely like, overall story. Yeah. You call it the notebook part two? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> there is a type of family, a Manson-type family. It is a kind of dark, gritty action movie essentially I, you know the way i describe it is like man on fire except you have satanists instead of uh instead of the cartel it is a very unique film it's something you're not going to see a lot of and i'm really excited to talk about it and uh, thank you so much for joining me absolutely i love your reference to man on fire because i think visually uh kenji our dp did this extraordinary job and made it look just spectacular yeah no it is man on fire does too it is striking like i i don't watch trailers i don't read about movies before i saw them and i started this up I was like oh this is this is interesting this is like dark and like very very i don't know foreboding like the the, the visual style is great the lighting is great the effects are fantastic it, it is definitely a unique film that you're not going to see pretty much anywhere else so right and it sits with you right it sits mm -hmm. with you for a long time after you've seen it you know where i i can walk out of a movie often and an hour later you know just blank on it but this one it, it, it doesn't leave you yeah, no, definitely. For, for good and bad, it doesn't leave you, right? Okay, okay, fair enough. Well, art is supposed to have that effect, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I guess the you know, first question for you, how did you get involved in this film? How did, you know, this, you know, look at this project, like, I want to do this. I want to be sad for a very long time. Well, you know, it's funny, you know, this was, you know, you know, I've been friends with Nick Cassavetes for a long time. I've been in, in, in many of his films. He's been very kind to me. He, he's, uh, you know, fortunately, he's a fan and that helps. Uh, but, you know, Nick and I uh, were talking and, um, you know, he'd finished um, his last film, The Other Woman, uh, about four or five years earlier. And he was kind of really in a place where he wasn't sure, you know, what was next. And I said, well, if you could do one film before you die, what is that film? And he goes, well, God is a bullet. And I said, well, what's wrong? And he's like, well, it's, it's dark and it's hard to get, you know, it's hard to get it made because it's so dark, but it's such a compelling story. I know that I have the right vision for it. And I said, well, can I run with it? Can I help you put it together? So um, he allowed me to do that and I, and I was able to put together, you know, um, you know, the, you know, the Patriot pictures on board with Michael Mendelson who jumped on and, and really fast tracked it and got it and got us to a place where we could actually get it made up. You know, if we made some deals to get the book rights back and the script back and, and all the other things, we were able to move it forward. So I was able to play a nice pivotal role in helping Nick, you know, you know, really achieve his vision. So that's how I got on board. That is awesome. Like, uh, two, two things from that. Like one, yeah, I, I when I first saw this, I didn't know that Nick Casavetes was the director. I didn't even look at that. And then I made the connection later. I was like, the Notebook and God is a Bullet. That is like two polar opposites of film. Right. And they're both great movies in their own right. So but you can see part of Nick's um, understanding of the darkness in Alpha Dog. You can see that he has it in him. Did you see yeah. Alpha Dog? I did. Yeah, I, I liked Alpha Dog a lot. I, I thought yeah. that was a very kind of a shocking movie for a, in a lot of ways, but all, all kind of good shocking. True story, Tim. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the other thing is, so I love that you kind of like helped to get this off the ground. I didn't check. Are you also a producer in this film as well? Because it sounds like you did a lot of the behind the scenes work for this movie to, to get it yeah. running and get it, you know, get it off the ground. 
I did, I did, and you know, and I'm very proud that you know we had um, all the a great team, you know, with uh, with X Y Z um, and and Pedro Pitchers, Michael Mendelssohn, and you know, we just had a great team. And, and Nick knows how to pick great craftsmen. So when we're talking about you know the the, the DP or the sound or the post production or you know the editing, I mean, he really people want to work with Nick. They want to be around him because he will he'll 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 kill for you to make sure that you get everything you need to help him achieve the vision. He's the best communicator I've ever worked with as an actor. When I'm on set, you know, I remember doing, um, you know, scenes in, in even Alpha Dog with Ben Foster, where he would come up and whisper things in my ear that would just send me off in a different direction, give me the freedom to take chances, you know, and, you know, he, he really isn't looking for you to, 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 um, he doesn't want you forcing anything on the movie he wants you to be truthful to your character and when you're playing a guy like john lee which now that you've seen the movie you know that's a real luxury because a lot of people are looking for a cheap you know or you know um end result oriented acting where you get somewhere and nick will chop your head off if you do that he wants you don't worry about doing that. that's my job i'm the director i'll get the movie where it needs to be you got to be truthful on your character whatever happens do not lie be truthful in that character whatever he does so there's a tremendous amount of responsibility but also a great freedom that you're given as an actor which is one of the things i love about that type of directing yeah no and i think it shines through the performances like you have some very extreme characters here but no one feels like they're uh, like you know if you kind of use your words like forcing it they are they're very naturally extreme and no one feels like they're kind of like overacting it feels like very the, the proper amount of craziness for each character, even though you've got these very, very out there characters in, in crazy situations. I mean, I, I really think that this is the performance by Micah Monroe and the lead female is really one of the most outstanding female performances I've seen in, in many, many years. She's, she's sublime. Yeah, exactly. I'm trying to look up the name. And also um, I liked uh, Carl Glussman as a uh, oh, yeah, well, of course. Like, yeah. He is, he is so kind of repulsive, but also so charismatic and compelling. It's a weird push and pull when you're he watching is. him. He's going to be a big movie star. He's yeah. going to be a huge star. I, I, his future is going to be really bright. This is a terrific performance. Very subtle, too, at times. Even though you think he's the bad guy, there's times when he just talks to you in, such, in almost a lulling voice. You're like... I'm getting lulled into liking this guy, but I know how bad he is, you know? Exactly. I mean, you kind of can, like, see how people might join cults, right? It's, it's just kind of like it's right in front of your face. Uh, so a lot of the characters have, you know, both extreme personalities and also extreme looks. Your character was a little more subdued. Were you sad that you didn't get to kind of, like, go full tatted out and go crazy on the on the metal side? Or was that kind of more to your liking to be, uh, I don't know, I guess a more grounded character? I mean, every character has good and bad and nuanced, but uh, your character, I guess, is more kind of uh, normal looking. Um, well, no, because, you know, I'd read the book um, and I know that John Lee is a pivotal, very crucial reason that all the events that take place start. And when you see the movie, you'll understand that better. I don't want to give away too much, but I will say, you know, John Lee's, you know, uh, a guy who, you know, who does who thinks that he's kind of, he's kind of a guy that operates with complete freedom in mor morally. And it's weird because um, the relationships that we, in the, I would say the B story, you know, um, drive the A story. And so if my character hadn't done what I'd done, there would be no, you know, big revenge movie that we have here. He has to upset these these events in motion. So I like that I have a character that is, you know, the impetus for the big for the big action. And and I think that the way that you, you can't, um, I don't know, you you can't wink at the camera. You know, you can't mm -hmm. twirl your mustache. You got to play mm -hmm. it truthful. So I think in a weird way, you know, look, I'll, I can say that I'm a, I'm his boss. I'm Nikolai Foster Waldo's boss. I'm I'm a <laughs> sheriff. He works for me. And you know, he's a guy that's really kind of never had a lot of excitement in his life. I'm talking about Nikolai's character until his daughter is taken, and yeah. then all of a sudden he's got to he's got to break all the rules that he's ever known. And um, little does he know that his boss, you know, there's all kinds of stuff that happens. Yeah. Uh, I'm so close to giving away something. Uh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fine, by all means, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get past that line. But, yeah, no, I agree. Like Nick, Nikolai is just like he is just kind of set in his life, and then all of a sudden this 
wrench is thrown in there that makes him take some very extreme choices very quickly and just kind of some would say plummet but you know it depends on on your perspective right he he is free but he also kind of has to go to some very dark places this film you know like we talked about this film has a pretty kind of dark motif like a dark feel what was it like on set i, I imagine it could go out one of two ways right it could be you know very kind of somber or it could be very kind of lighthearted because you kind of have to to balance out what you're filming I think you nailed it. I think it's it wasn't it wasn't somber, but it was serious. Like there's a lot of fun. There was a lot of um, a lot of chaos as they're on every set. There's a lot of energy, but people were coming with the idea that you know, um, like for example, you, 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 you know, you just talked about Carlos. Carlos, you know, it's like he's prepared. He's once you get all the ink on all those characters, put all the you know the the tattoos and and the, those those guys, they were scary to be around. Like mm -hmm. their personalities change, you know? So yeah, I, I avoided being around them because I think, you know, my character has has to keep his separation from everybody. Um, but January and Nikolai and uh, David Thornton and, uh, you know, we all had a had a nice camaraderie and we came and, you know, we, Nick is a really gracious prep director. So there's a lot of talking oh, before wow. we actually get into it, but he doesn't micro micromanage. He just, he wants you to be free, so. Yeah, I would say that it's really about we're all so into making this work that it's really focus. It's great focus. That is awesome. That sounds like a fantastic environment to mm -hmm. kind of work in. You know, you get to kind of let yourself go in the acting and then you can kind of like pull back and, and be kind of more family oriented in the in the preparation for it. But that's um, the secret. You want to throw it all into the acting so you have nothing left. And then when you're into the day, you just want to collapse on your bed. Exactly. Uh, so last question, last question. I know that your character didn't have tattoos in the film. Do you have any tattoos yourself? Do you have anything that, uh, any ink? Absolutely nothing. And my son won't allow me to get a tattoo. I begged him and he's like, dad, mom has tattoos. You can't have any tattoos like me. I'm like, so as long as he doesn't have tattoos, he's 12. I won't get any. Nick is covered in tattoos. Uh, tattoos I, right? Really? <laughs> I love it. That is fantastic. Well, I guess, yeah, you know, make what you know. So you can see uh you know the the tattoos on screen you can see the dark film that we were all talking about the uh, the film is guys a bullet is coming to theaters on june 23rd 2023 you will not see anything else like it it is a very kind of intense dark wonderful visceral film and uh thank you so much paul johansson who thank plays you. john lee thank you so much David. really enjoyed speaking with you i really appreciate it awesome thank you that was Paul Johansson who plays John Lee in God is a Bullet, which comes to theaters on June 23rd, 2023. It is a gritty, dark, man-on-fire-esque action movie that has some really good effects, some really grisly scenes, and an overall just kind of like dark, foreboding style. I really liked it, and I thought it was a very unique film. I definitely think you should check it out, and uh, thanks so much for watching. If you like this interview, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you. Thank you.